All right, so if you're seeing my screen, you see, you see the problem. It says solve x squared equals minus 100 by using square roots. Yes. Okay, so this problem can also be written this way. And this is often how it's, and it would just say something like solve the following. Yeah. Um, so to solve, what you're trying to do is you're trying to isolate the square, the mm -hmm. square term. And that's why they move it to the other side. Now, when you take a square root of x squared, it's plus or minus the square root of minus 100. Um, mm -hmm. You, the, the square root only works for numbers that are greater than or equal to zero. So that, that's why there are no real solutions. I think, I think you, you wrote that down. So that's just review. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the next one here. Uh, your goal is always to isolate the, the square term. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have, uh, we have M squared minus 350 equals 11. M squared equals 361 when we add 350 to both sides. Okay. Now, this is actually the first time that I can I can do this with a student. Um, so I'm gonna. Ooh, I don't have that one. Let's make a, a note here. All right. So when you take the square root of both sides, this is very important. It's plus or minus the square root of whatever that is. Now, this is a well-known number. Um, if you have a calculator, you can do it, but it is plus or minus uh, 19. 19. This plus or minus is critical, though. It's very mm -hmm. common that, that students um, um, uh, put that there in yeah. front of the square root. Yeah, so... Um, Okay, um, so now the next one is, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm so disjointed here. Let me snip it in here, question three. You want me to snip some of them and email them to you? No, I, I've got it up here. So uh, this one here, it's, um, it, it, you said x squared minus 10 equal to zero. You said x squared equals to 10. And then you take a square root of both sides. When you take a square root, though, it's plus or minus the square root of 10. Now, you're trying to find two numbers that multiply together to give you 10. So like 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. So uh -huh. on a number line here, this is, this is kind of critical. Let's say this is 0, 1, 2, 3. There's 3. There's 4. Is the square root of 10 closer to 3 or 4? Of uh, It's closer to 4. Four, uh, three, three. Three. Do you see why? Because nine is closer to 10. We know the square root of nine is three. So it's kind of right in there. So yeah. No, not possible, not possible, unreasonable. Has to be that one. Oh, wow. Okay, so you don't even have to use a calculator, but you can. All right. Um, okay, so this one, I want you to do the following. I want you to um, isolate the x squared term but don't take the square root of it. Just isolate the x squared term and I'll give you about 60 seconds then I'm gonna jump back and... Uh, okay. Okay, so let me jump in here. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 144 to both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I add that to both sides, I get 64x squared equals 121. I'm gonna divide both sides by 64. So you should get down to where x squared equals 121 divided by 64. Is that where you're at? Yes. Okay, so there's some properties of square roots that you need to know. 
one of them is that the square root of a times b equals the square root of a times the square root of b. You might think, well, well, that's not really useful here. I'm dividing. Well, there's one for division. A divided by e, b equals the square root of a times the square, square root of b. b. Yeah. So when you take the square root here, mm -hmm. it's plus or minus again, square root of 121 over 64. It's plus or minus the square root of 121 over the square root of 64. And that would be 11 over 8, plus or minus. That's right. I don't know if you got that one right or wrong before, but I got I do, that wrong. I, what I do know is you understand it now, and uh, that that's uh, it's pretty critical here. Yeah. Okay, so we got a word problem coming up here. Okay, Sam wants to build a wooden deck on his patio. That's nice. Um, the area of the patio is 280 feet squared, and they give you a formula. So this is this six x is also down here. That's also six x, oh. and, and that's the base. Now this okay. is also the base if you kind of invert the way you look at it. Mm -hmm. um, the height though is here, up and down. What about the other side? We don't the, need the uh, right other side. side of it. You need you need okay. the you need you need you need this height. Uh, you need the okay. height. This this is a diagonal. It's it's useless. Okay. So the area is base times height. Now they give you the area. They say the area is two hundred and eighty. Mm -hmm. That's that's just given right there. Boom. The yeah. Base the base is six x. The height mm -hmm. is a uh, five x. Five x. So two eighty equals thirty x squared. Mm hmm. Okay, we're going to divide both sides by 30. So 280 divided by 30 equals x squared. Now, when you take a square root, what have I said over and over again? Um, divide divide using square root and that a over b square root. No, that's, um, not what I've, not, that's not what I've said in every single problem. I've said something in every single problem about when you take a square root. What, what, is, what is very critical? that it's plus and minus. That's right. So you might think in here, well, he's told me over and over again, it's plus or minus, but this time X represents a length. Oh. So it must be the positive of it. Ah. So grab a calculator and mm -hmm. you, if you can't enter all this into your calculator, if you can't first divide uh, 28 uh, 280 by 30 and then take a take a square root of that. Okay. sounds like you're using uh, your computer. It really would be better if you had a uh, calculator that you were using, handheld one. Yeah, I can, I can get one. We should always have that out when working together because you, you want to have the right tools in place uh, to be able to do this. All right. get 9.3 9.3 did you take a square root yes uh, no you divided first you didn't take a square root so the, it, when you put this in your calculator it's square root parentheses 280 slash 30 oh
I still get 9.33. Well, you're I'm, doing it, you, you, it. Okay. I mean, the, what is 280 divided by 30? 9.3. Then take a square root of that number. 3. 3. I get 3. Round three. Okay. What is the question asking here? The area, find the base. And which quantity represents the base? Uh, the bottom, the bottom part of the uh, trapeze of the that, that, That's true, but I'm asking which quantity. Quantity means which expression represents the base? Uh, X. No, X is, X is just a variable. What did we use right over here for the base and right over here for the height? We use um, X. We used, no. we put. What did I write here? You put in parentheses, 6X, parentheses. Okay, parentheses. so 6X represents the base. Yes. What represents the height? 5X. Great. Now, what is it asking you to find? Uh, find the base. Okay. So I have to put that three back into six. Exactly. Okay, I get 18. I get 18. So okay. my 18 times five is... Why are you multiplying it by five? What, what did okay. we just say? What is the base? 18, 18. No, it's six X and you said X is about three, right? Yes. So yes. six times about three is about 18. Yes. 18 feet. All right, now I'm gonna open up the quiz and I'm gonna have you work through um, work through it. You have okay. to pay attention to what I'm saying. You have to you have to either say I don't understand what you're asking, or you have to say uh, you know please repeat that, or can you explain it in another way? Um, when you just when you just say things that don't make any sense, I don't really know if you don't understand or what. I have no idea. Okay, so I'm going to snip in the first question, and and then um, uh, want you to work on solving it, please. It's letter C. That's right. Okay. What I need you to do here is I need you to just uh, uh, pause. Um, okay. You need to stay on the call, but I'm going to be unmu I'm gonna be unmuted for about three minutes and then I'll be back. Okay.
right, I'm back. Are you there? Christopher? Hey. 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 Sorry for uh, the delay. Um, we're going to do um, we're going to do question two next. Okay. Um, it's uh, sorry, question three next, um, and you're going to use square roots again uh, to solve it. It, it. it says so, but um, we'll. Uh, we're doing these in a specific order. So there's there's no solutions to the first one. I agree with that. <laughs> this one, there are solutions. It's similar to one we did earlier in the lesson. Mm Um, it's the next one is letter B. It is. So, so it's 169 X squared minus 16 equals zero. You move the 16 over, then you divide by 169. And this is where you're at that critical step where it's like, okay, I gotta take a square root of both sides, plus or minus square root of 16 over 169. There's a property here that says that you can take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom, so it's plus or minus four over 13. Very good. Okay, we're moving moving right through this here. Um, I'm, I'm moving ahead to seven. We're gonna go through all of them, but uh, they, they come in out of order uh, for learning. All right, um, let's, uh, let's see here. Um, all right. Uh, it's letter D because it's negative 25. Agreed. Yep. It becomes X squared equals negative 25 over 196. Uh, now, what if what if it was negative um, 196 X squared plus 25 equals zero? Would this have a solution? Yes. It would. I agree. Okay. Uh, let's get the let's get that down here. So. This next one is, is the, it says to, to round, and, and we talked about using your calculator. We had some issues using it. You can actually, you can actually do it much the same way, which is through, through an estimation technique uh, that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So give this a try. You're going to use the square root property again for this. All right. I get 9.49 plus or minus. Yeah, so x squared minus 90 equals zero. Sometimes what I used to do is actually just, I wouldn't even write this. I would I would look at the, this thing that's given here and I would just, I would say, oh, the, I'm gonna move that 90 over so it's equals 90. Yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So plus or minus square root of 90. So like, for example, the, uh, the square root of 81 is nine. Yes. The square root of 100 is 10. 10. So on a number line, like if there's nine and there's 10, and that's the square root of 81, that's the square root of 100, where does 90 fall between 81 and 100? Uh, it's gonna fall in the middle. Right in the middle. And that's why this answer is so reasonable here. Yeah. Great. Okay, we're moving to uh, this one, this next one here. Um, it says to solve by graphing, but I want you to use the uh, square root property again here. It's a nice extension of the ones that we've been working on here. Okay. It would be two and two. I agree. It always has to have two solutions uh, in these problems. So, yes. all right, now we're on to stuff that you um, you looked at 
earlier in the week. Mm-hmm. And my guess is, is that uh, um, you, you, you probably have a pretty good understanding of this. So go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, this okay. one, see if you can work it out on your own. We'll be right back. Okay. All right, I'm back. Do you have a solution here? Um, it's going to be six and nine, letter D. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check your answer. Let's say X is six. Mm-hmm. Six squared minus 15 times six should equal negative 54. And if nine is right, then nine squared minus, oops, nine squared minus 15 times nine should equal minus 54. 36 minus 90, mm-hmm. that one works. Now, because there's no overlap in the answers, this is kind of a test taking strategy. Because there's no overlap in the answers, like you already know that's gonna work, but let's check it anyway. So 81 minus 135, does that equal minus 54? And it does. Great, okay, so you got you got that down. That's good to see. Um, try to actually mark the answers on the ones that uh, you've been doing. Um, okay, so we're gonna use, we're gonna do number nine next. It's kind of like the last one. Um, the hint here is that you need to expand, you need to foil first. You definitely need to foil first. And if, if you're not sure what I mean by that, I can, I can clarify, but. Oh, zero properties of the equation. Well, don't worry about that. Ignore that. Just just ignore that. That's that's not important here. The, okay. the important thing is you're solving, and I'm telling you to FOIL first. And if you're not yes. sure what that means, then then we can go through that. But that's really critical that you can you can do this step. All right. So it's x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals negative 12. Okay. So before, in the previous problem, what was <laughs> what did you do first? What did you do with this minus 54? I, um, I put it um, behind negative 15x and made it a plus. You, you added positive. it to both sides of the equation. The, yeah. the key here is is to is to is to factor. Before you can factor, you have to have zero on the right hand side. Mm-hmm. Do you understand that? Do you follow that? Uh, 
Yes. Okay, so here we need zero on the right-hand side. How do we get zero on the right-hand side here? Um, we move the 12 over to the 10. Instead of saying move, because move could literally mean like picking it up and grabbing it, you, you undo the math operation. Okay. You add 12 to both sides. That's what, that's what I wanted to hear. Add 12 to both sides. Oh, add 12 to both sides. I get negative two and negative one. So you probably got this, but then you said each of them equal to zero. Yes. And that's the that's the that's the uh, zero product property. That's that's this step right here is the zero product property. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I agree. So it's this last one here. Good. Okay, uh, this next one, this is question five. Believe it or not, we're, we're down to, I think, the last two, maybe three. Um, this one, it's just to solve by factoring. So you're gonna, you're gonna do the same thing. Now, you wanna get everything on one side and you generally want that, that, that leading term to be positive. So you, I'm gonna recommend going this way, which is by adding it. Okay. I get four. Well, four is not an answer, Christopher. Oh. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, that's very, I mean, that's, that's very, you've got to do better than that. I mean, I mean, come on. It's, it's, sorry, it's negative four. Sorry. Well, I agree, but there's two answers. So now from this step right here, what is the very first type of factor that you're always supposed to do to do? Um, the greatest common factor. Well, does, factor. Does three go into each of these? Yes, it does. It does. Okay. This is much easier to factor than than the one before it. So it's negative four, but it's negative four twice. Yes. Okay, so I agree, it's that one down there. You should never give me an answer that isn't that isn't on the the um, assignment. I mean, it, it's... Sorry, say, I, 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 well, I see say, what I did wrong, though. You ought, to, you ought to say, okay, I did, I did something wrong. Um, you know, let me check my work here. That doesn't seem right. I accidentally put a negative 24. I accidentally put a negative in front of the 24. Okay. All right. So now this one, I want you to solve using the square root property. Okay. Okay. What did you come up with? Um, let me just put it in first. Okay. You're doing this by hand, I hope. Yeah, yeah, let me get another pencil out because mine's. Be right back. All right. All right, I'm back. Um, all right. Do you want to move that 28 to the right side? Yes, that's what I did. Then what did you do next? Then I square rooted the 28. Is x squared by itself? No, it's not. So in every other problem we did, you have to isolate the square root. Yes. So. How do you isolate the square root? What is the math operation taking place there between seven and x squared? Div uh, division. You have to undo it with division. What is the answer? Four. 
but then you have to square root square root that, which becomes two. What did I say every time you take a square root? Um, plus is the uh, plus or minus? Okay, so you only gave me one answer, so I, I guess I should only uh, mark down one of them, right? Square root of x squared is plus or minus square root of four. You're you're not the first person not to know this, but you you have to you have to do this. Like this is really critical. Um, this is like like a it's a basic fundamental thing. You need to say out loud plus or minus plus or minus plus or minus until you get it. Okay. All right, we're up to the, uh, I think the last question here. Let me check it out again. Uh, check all these out after I have you look at it. Um, it says, you know, the, the height of a snowball is thrown from a cliff. So you got a, you got a cliff, comes down, boom, hits the ground. We want to find the time here where it hits the ground. And I gave you the equation. Mm -hmm. So what are some methods you know to solve? You can use the square root property. Mm -hmm. Well, that works when there's no middle term, but this one has that middle term there. You could graph. You could graph it or you could factor. So I want you to factor this one. But the first thing I want you to do is I want you to factor out a GCF of minus 16. Negative so 16. H, so your H of okay. T will look like this. It's minus 16 and then something in here. So I want you to figure out what goes in parentheses. You're, you're factoring okay. out minus 16 from every single one. Okay. Okay, I factored it out. Okay, what do you have in here? Um, in the parentheses, I have t squared minus 4t minus 12. Excellent. Now I want you to factor this. Okay. Um, is it t minus two and t minus six? They cannot both be negative. So you're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 12, but they have to add up to negative four. Oh, uh, okay, that, okay. that means one's positive and one's negative. Okay. So wait, you can, so you said, but they have to add up to negative 12. No, they have to multiply to negative 12 and uh -huh. add up add up to negative four. Okay. And I've mentioned this before, it's usually good to just write out all the factors because one of them will work. You had the right numbers, you didn't have the right sign. And, and you don't wanna be guessing, I mean, cause it, it's, it's a very, um, it's a very recipe based thing that we're doing here. Um, plus two and negative six. T plus two, T minus six. So now you set both of these equal to zero. That's the zero product property. That's you set this equal to zero and then you set the T minus six equal to zero. You get two solutions. Uh, you get uh, T equals negative two and T equals six, uh, which, which is possible here. Like, uh, which is reasonable given the, the context of this problem. Six seconds. That's right. I mean, it's there, but but the other one's over here. Like it, it does hit the ground over here, but that's like, it's it's a scenario that doesn't exist in, in time. Yeah. Okay, let me check and see that all of them are answered. Two, three, four is answered. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 all answered. Okay, great. Um, it doesn't look like we've got time to do the uh, exam, so we'll, we'll schedule that uh, another time. Okay. All right. I'll, uh, I'll send out these uh, notes and screen recording here shortly. Okay. Okay, bye now. Bye.